before we begin with our topic for today, let us answer two basic questions. According to you, what is the basic physiological requirement of water just for survival? Yes, the correct answer is 2 liters per head per day. Second, how much water do you think is needed to meet the need of all urban domestic purposes? The correct answer is 150 to 200 liters per head per day. Based on these questions, as you would have already understood, today we are going to talk about portable water and its sources. Water is essential for life and access to safe drinking water is a basic human right. There can be no state of positive community health and well-being without a safe water supply. This safe drinking water is known as portable water. So, what are the characteristics of water to be safe for consumption, you might ask? The water in question should be free from pathogenic agents and harmful chemical substances. It should also be usable for domestic purposes and hence be pleasant to taste. It is also necessary for the water to be available close to the people and since if it is at a distance, people might just use water from the source close to them, which may not necessarily be portable. Thus, keeping these in mind, Portable water has been defined as water that is free from pathogenic agents, free from harmful chemical substances, pleasant to taste, that is free from colour and odour and is useful for all domestic purposes. The four key points in this definition can be remembered with the mnemonic PHDT, where P stands for pathogenic agents, H for harmful agents, D for domestic use and last T for taste. When it comes to applications, water is used for so many things in our daily lives. It can be used for personal requirements, public needs like swimming pools, for agricultural requirements, industrial needs like factories and for removing waste. Where, however, can we locate the water required for all of this work? Where does water come from? There are mainly three subheadings under which we can study this. Rain, surface water and groundwater. Talking about rain, it is the prime source of water and the purest form of water. Although rain water is free from pathogenic agents, it tends to become impure as it passes through the atmosphere from where it picks up the impurities. Rain water also helps with the water cycle. As you would remember from your EVS classes, the water cycle is a cycle where a part of rain water seeps into the ground to form ground water and a part of it evaporates back into the atmosphere. The next source is surface water. Going back to our geography classes, there are several types of water bodies available, which all account to surface water. First are the ponds and lakes, which are natural excavations where water gets collected. But these water bodies are stagnant and do not flow, which may lead people to use this for domestic purposes, in turn getting the water contaminated and thus not being portable. Similarly, streams and rivers even though our flowing water bodies are usually grossly polluted and thus will require purification treatment before being fit for drinking. Impounding reservoirs are artificial lakes or constructed dams which store large amounts of surface water and can later be used for consumption. The only disadvantage of this type is the growth of algae and other microorganisms which will then impart bad taste and odour to the water. An important point to remember here is that the area that drains into the reservoir is known as the catchment area. It is important to keep this catchment area free from human or animal intrusion. Lastly, we have seawater. When visiting beaches, you must have noticed the water is salty. What do you think is the percentage of salts in seawater? It is 3.5% of salts in solution. Now, we need to know that seawater is a major source because all surface water ultimately drains into the sea. This water can be used for consumption only after desalting and demineralizing the water. After rain and surface water, our last source is groundwater. Groundwater, as discussed earlier, is the rainwater that seeps into the ground. Of all three, it is the most economic and practical source for providing water to small communities. It is superior to surface water since it provides an effective filtering medium. We will learn more about this in the coming videos. Coming back to groundwater, its usual sources are springs and wells which could be shallow and deep. As you can see in this image, two impervious layers are present 
which are layers that do not allow the further penetration of water in the underlying ground layers. In case of shallow wells, it extracts water present above the first impervious layer. The water is usually contaminated since it is present on the top and is also hard. The chances of water going dry in the summer are also high. On the other hand, as you can see, deep well tap water is from below the first impervious layer, that is, from the second porous layer. The water from the deep well presents itself as a coin. On one side, it's purer in comparison to shallow wells and on the other side, it's harder. Why do we say water from the deep well is pure? As we already know, the impervious layer does not easily allow water to penetrate further past it and it is even more difficult for the contaminants to easily enter the first impervious layer. Also, since the wells are deep, there is high amount of mineral content in the water, which is the reason for the water being hard here. Lastly, we have springs, which, despite looking like surface water, come from beneath the ground through a small opening. The water spurs out due to pressure and it then becomes surface water. Hence, the main source of springs is groundwater. Since this water is exposed, it can easily get contaminated. Springs too, like wells, can be deep and shallow. In conclusion, access to portable water is crucial for maintaining good health and preventing diseases. It is important to ensure that the sources of water are properly treated and monitored to ensure that water is safe for consumption. Thank you. For more such videos, download our app and watch videos seamlessly and learn through visually engaging mind maps. We hope we made public health dentistry slightly better for you. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel and see you guys in the next one.